B'Shem Hashem Na'asev Nasliyah. Tonight's Shi'ur is dedicated to Nishmat Asher Ben Ezra Elish Mereni, um, who passed away this week. Menuchatu began Eden. And also, Le'ilun Nishmat, all of the Metim, Rafael Ben Munabar, Emmanuel Ben Munabar, Shemuel Ben Rabbi Yehuda. And for the Rufa Shalema of Kol Chole Am Yisrael, may Hashem give a Rufat and Nefesh of Radakuf to all those that need it. And the Zechut of the Zerah Shimshon should be a merit for all of Am Yisrael. Those that need to get married should be able to get married. Those that need to have children, Hashem should give them. And everyone should be safe and well. Amen. So, in today's parasha, Parashat Re'eh, <clears throat> we know it as the parasha of the Tochachot, where Moshe Rabbeinu talks about the blessings and the curses of the Torah. If we follow the Torah, what happens? If we not, what happens? The Zer Shimshon is going to concentrate, as always, he picks a, a few points and he concentrates on, on those points. And here it is. The Pasuk says in the Torah, when it comes to giving money to someone that is in need, giving tzedakah, the Pasuk is a little bit kind of unique. And Ezer Shimshon is going to break down the Pasuk and tell us what we learn from the uniqueness of this Pasuk. Pasuk says like this, it's in Devarim, Tetvav Yud. Naton titen lo, velo yera levavecha, betitecha lo. Ke biglal hadavar haze yevarachecha Hashem elokecha, bechol maasecha, ubchol mishlach yadecha. Pasuk says, surely give to him. But we translate it as surely give to him. But the Torah, that's what I'm saying. You always lose a lot of the meaning of the Torah through translation. The Torah says, Naton titenlo. Technically speaking, it says give, give to him. Right? But whenever you have two words repeated for a verb, for an action, the translation is always surely or definitely give to him. It's like Hashem is trying to emphasize definitely give to him. So the Torah says, Naton titenlo, surely give to him, velo yera' levavecha, and your heart should not become bad or influenced negatively when you give. Beti techalo, when you are giving to him or whoever it is that is in need. Ki biglala davar hazeh yevarachecha Hashem elokecha. Because for this thing, God will bless you. Bechol maasecha, in everything that you do. Uvchol mishlach yadecha, in Everything that you put your hands in, Hashem is going to bless you. Now, we're going to find out, according to the Zerah Shimshon, what is the secret to receive all these blessings. And the blessings we're talking about is physical blessings. Meaning money, wealth. How do you acquire the wealth that the Torah promises by giving to this person or to someone that is in need? And the Zerah Shimshon, through breaking down this Pasuk, is going to explain it to us. It's not so simple. Because if the Pasuk would have just said, Ten lo, give tzedakah. Then we're like, okay, whoever gives. But the Zerah Shimshon is going to break it down and go, there's a few things that the Torah is actually teaching us. How do you write that check? What do you do? How many times? Everyone's going to take out their phones and their notebooks and we're going to turn, okay, A. <laughs> Step one, take out your checkbook. So he says like this. Number one, question number one. What is the reason for the double language of naton titen? As we said, what we translate into, surely give. But really it's naton titen, give, give. Right? It, you shall give, give. Right? Why is this kefal lashon? Why is it this double language? Question number two. The odd we have to ask also. Lama chazar pasuk lomar beti techalo. The pasuk once again repeats itself and says, "Don't don't have a negative heart beti techalo when you're giving him." First, it says, "Give, give, give to him," and don't have a negative heart when you're giving. Why do I need to? I know why you're saying you're referring to me giving. Fine, I already know. Natonti tenlo, it should say, Natonti tenlo, surely give him, and don't have a negative heart when you are. That's it. Why? Don't have a negative heart when? When you are giving it to him. Why are we repeating it again? Number three, question number three is, Shem yera levavo, hare lo yirtse li tenlo, tzedaka klal. Vakatu vomer, velo yera levavo, beti tenlo, beti techalo. When the Pasuk says, velo, velo yira levavecha, 
don't, I, I, don't, I don't know how to really translate this well enough, I guess. I'm not Art Scroll. Art Scroll usually does a very good job in translating these things. Here it says, And do not have a negative heart or a bad heart when you're giving him or when you're giving tzedakah. But really, he's asking a very valid question. You're already giving. The Torah is talking about when you're already giving. If you're giving, where's the negativity in that? Why, are you, why do you have a negative heart if you're already giving? It should say, the Pasuk should really say, and don't have a negative heart and not give. Give. But the Torah says, and when you give, don't have, don't, don't have a negative heart by giving. What do you mean? I, I'm giving. That means I don't have a bad heart. I, I have a good heart. That's why I'm giving. Hello. Make sense? We would have thought of the same question. Except we didn't. That's why the Zerah Shimshon has a sefer. And we don't. Because he, he, he understands the things that are kind of out of place. Or, or what to, to us looks like it's out of place. Obviously there's nothing out of place in the Torah. And that's the third question. So he says like this, and he explains, the sefer explains, he says, how could this be? Shemi sheli borra enonoten. If someone has a bad heart, doesn't give tzedakah to begin with. Right? Vem noten, but if he does give siman sheen li borra, that shows that he doesn't have a bad heart. He has a, he's a very good-hearted person. He's a gold-hearted person. He's giving tzedakah. So why are you saying, when you're giving, don't be a bad-hearted person? Right? Number four, question number four, and the last question. We have to find out why does it say ki biglal davar hazeh and because of this yevarachecha Hashem will bless you and everything that you do dezeh mashma sheba lemaet davar acher shalav en zochim lebracha when it says ze when the Torah says and because of this Hashem will bless you Hashem will give you as a general rule whenever those of us that learn Talmud learn Gemara this is how we decipher some codes. Whenever the Torah says ze, it's referring to something and not something else. Meaning it's pointing out to something excluding something else. Because of this, you will be blessed. As opposed to what? No, no, no. As opposed to because of what, you won't be blessed. You're telling me because of something, you will be blessed. Meaning there is something else that you won't be blessed because of. What is that something else? What is this ze coming to include and what is it coming to exclude? You understand? Hacham say that when in the Torah says, when Hashem showed Moshe Rabbeinu how to make the menorah or what the machatita shekel was like, the half shekel, over there it also says, ze yitenu, this you shall give. And the Hacham say, whenever Hashem says ze, it's actually showing something to Moshe Rabbeinu. Showing him like a coin and saying this and nothing else. So whenever you have the word this, it's, it's actually telling us one thing and excluding something else. Nothing else other than this. Point is clear? Okay? Alright. As we say in Yiddish, klar. Or in Spanish, claro. Right? See, I know it in Yiddish, I know it in Spanish. So now he's going to start going into the answer. He says like this. First, we have to understand that there is two obligations of giving tzedakah and there are two distinct separate obligations for tzedakah. We think tzedakah is just giving, your, you know, give, give, give charity. But he says, according to the Torah, this pasuk is teaching us there's actually two obligations of tzedakah, not only one. Which are, Ha'echadhu, the first obligation of tzedakah is, there's an obligation, Shekol ish ve'ish mechuyav liten la'ani kefi hasagat yado. Every single person in Am Yisrael is obligated. This is a chiyuv from the Torah. It's an obligation. It's not a right. You don't have a right to give. You have an obligation to give. You have to. Each Jew has an obligation to give as much as he can afford to support those in need. Whatever you can afford. You make this much amount of money, that much you can afford. Whatever you can afford, you give. 
That is an obligation from the Torah. You must give it. Which, you know, the minhag has become because of the 10% to the Beit HaMikdash. 10% is the minimum that a person should give. If the person is not doing well, now we're going into the halachic basis, I don't want to get into it so much. The person really can't afford it, okay, even less than 10%, because that's what they can afford. It goes up according to what the person can afford. If the person is in school and has got loans up the yin-yang or whatnot, they can't afford it at that time, maybe they later can give it. But that, that's that chiyuv, that obligation is according to what the person can afford. Right? Because of what Hashem has given to him, um, the if somebody has a lot of wealth and God has given that person much things to have in their life, that person has an obligation to give much more than somebody else. That's his obligation. He's gotten a lot, he's received a lot, he has to give a lot to charity. And if a person has very little that Hashem has given them, that person is only obligated to give a small amount. Hashem is not asking for the person for something they can't afford. If someone has a lot which they received from Hashem, and we'll explain what that means, they have to give a lot. And if someone doesn't, they're not obligated to give a lot. Everyone according to their measure. Now he says, Vayesh chiyuv acher. But there's also another obligation. This is a big chidush that the Zara Shimishon gives. It's going to really open up our eyes. And I'm telling you it's the secret. And I'll explain to you why I'm telling you it's the secret. Then he says there's another obligation of the mitzvah of tzedakah. Behu. And that is, Sheim ha-netina lefi erech ha-nechasim lo taspik letzorech ha-aniim. Lefi shehem merubim o... Then there's another one. That if let's say the person has a lot of money, right? But the need of the aniyim is much more. The need of the per- people that are in need either is because there are too many, let's say, poor people that are in need. Or you have one person that is in need of a lot. For instance, he gives an example of someone that, that's been wrongfully accused and he's been thrown in jail and you have to pay the government a lot of money to bring him out, which is a big mitzvah de oraita, of releasing those that are captive. Or captive by enemies. You have to pay a lot of ransom money to bring them out. right? And that's a lot of money and probably a lot more that you can feel comfortable to do. But in those certain situations, either there's a lot of aniyim, there's a lot of people in need, or there is one ani or one individual that needs a lot of money in order to have that help. As, he says, then, tzarich shekol adam yiten harbe kesef letzorechani, every person should give a lot of money for that person, yoter mihara uilo liten, more than he can afford, more than he is obligated to give. In that sense, it's not what you're comfortable with, it's the exact opposite. Get a little uncomfortable. You're obligated to give, you should give more than you feel you can afford. Meaning, a lot of times, a person amasses wealth, they have wealth, they have money, or whatever it is, or just normal person, you have your bank account where you give your tzedakah monthly from or yearly from every six months or whatever it is, then you have your savings. Your savings a lot of times people don't count as their money to give, it's their savings. It's not usable money. It's for times of need or for investments or whatnot. In this situation the Zara Shimshon says all bets are off. When it comes to a major need of a community, major need of one person or aniim, that's when you got to go into the savings even. You got to go more than you're comfortable to give. Ninsa. So he says like this. And he explains, like the Pasuk says in Devarim, Ki patoach tiftach et yadecha lo. Open, open again, the double language. Patoach. Tiftach, open, open, meaning surely open, 
open your hands to him and give him as much as he needs. Make sure the person, whatever they need, you're, you're going to provide. So it says, now we find. We just said there's two different types of tzedakah, right? So now we find that the first chiyuv, the first obligation of tzedakah, which is according to your wealth, according to what you can afford, that is something that every single person, normal, rich, not so rich, middle class, high class, everyone has that obligation no matter what. That money has to go. That you got to give. And he's going to explain it brilliantly. And the reason why every person has to give this money, the first type of tzedakah, which we said every person has to give according to what they can afford. What's the reason for that? Why is the Torah expecting us to give that tzedakah? That's in order for a person not to be an unappreciative person. Meaning the 10% that a person, let's say we call it a 10%. The 10% that a person has to give from their money to tzedakah all the time, that's just so that you're not an unappreciating person. That's just so that you show HaKadosh Baruch Hu, I appreciate everything you've given me. And more than that, the Zerah Shimshon says, not only you're showing that you're appreciating everything God has given you, but it's more. It's not your money. You're telling HaKadosh Baruch Hu, thank you Hashem, you've given me this much. This much of it is not even mine, I'm supposed to give it away. And in order to show you that I appreciate you giving me this money, I'm going to give it away. That's showing my appreciation to you. So really you're not doing any favors for anyone other than who? Yourself. So he says the first type of tzedakah, you're no tzaddik here. You're not some righteous guy walking around, I give 10%. You're not so, <laughs> you know, it's wonderful. But the Zerah is saying, hey buddy, you're just returning money you owe to give. You have to give that money. So that is just the first type of tzedakah, which is what? According to what you can afford. Meaning it's percentage wise. You have $10, $1. You have $100, $10. 10%. If a person really can't even afford that because they owe so much money, then there's other halachic boundaries that go into that of how to divide it. Maybe sometimes a person is not even chayav to give anymore because they themselves need money. God forbid, God forbid, we should never know. But the minimum is there for who can give. And that, again, you're not doing any favors for anyone. The only person you're doing a favor for is you because you're showing that you're not an embarrassment to your nation. You're showing that you're not somebody that just receives and doesn't pay back. You're showing, Kakadosh Baruch Hu, thank you, Ribbono Shel Olam, I have received from you, I appreciate, and to show my appreciation, I'm going to use the certain amount of my money for the uses that you see fit, which is what? Giving back. Make sense? That's the first type. And as explained... <clears throat> <clears throat> and he brings from a, 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 um, the, the commentaries bring from a sefer called uh, the, from the sefer Achinuch he says Yesod Musad Ufnagkeret Torah Tenu HaKadoshah A secret of the Torah Tenu HaKadoshah is A depth of the Torah Tenu HaKadoshah is Heyot HaAdam Mode Umakir Batovatav Shel HaKadosh Baruch Hu A person has to always recognize and appreciate all the goodness that God has given him Velo Lehiot Kafui Tova And never be a person that, that is unappreciative Ki Mimenu Everything is from HaKadosh Baruch Hu Says because it brings shalom when you give tzedakah, it brings shalom between a person and a Hakadosh Baruch Hu. How? Because when a person gives tzedakah, you're showing appreciation to Hashem. What are you really doing by showing appreciation to Hashem? By saying, hey, a lot of times what happens, a person works hard, you make all those nice deals. 
you go to school for 15 years, you become a nice doctor or whatever it is, and you start making money, it's easy to start saying to yourself, you know, I did this. I worked hard for this. You know, why couldn't he or she go do the same thing? I went to school, I sweat, I, I didn't cheat once. I took all the tests fair and square, and I got out of college, and I got out of university, I became a doctor, I became a lawyer, I became whatever. And I did, I, I, me, me, me. So when a person gives that first kind of tzedakah, you're showing Kakadosh Baruch Hu, no, 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 it's, got, it's not gotten to my head. I still believe that I passed all those tests because you helped me, I went to that school because you helped me, I make the money because you helped me. Because without you, I couldn't lift a finger, I couldn't, leave, I couldn't make a penny. So in order to show you that I appreciate every step you take taking me through, I give back. That's the first. Meaning, in the first type of tzedakah that we give, first category, you're just showing that you're a mensch. That's all you're doing. You're acting a, the way a human being should act. So you can't be like, what do you mean? I give... No, that's, you're supposed to. That's what you're supposed to do. Then he says, Then you go to the second obligation. The second obligation that we set up tzedakah. Yoter mi'erech nechasav, which we said has to be more than the value of what you have. Meaning you got to push yourself even further, sometimes to a stage where it might be uncomfortable in times of need. <clears throat> says in that category, hu chiyuv retzoni bilvad. That is an obligation retzoni. Retzoni means Hashem is saying it's an obligation, but it's, an obli- it's something that I want. I'm not going to say you have to, but this is what I want. Now you'll see why the Torah phrases it like, phrases it like this. Shezeu retzono yitparach. This is God's will. Sheitenu tzedakah merubal. So it's God's will so that the person should give tzedakah more than he can really afford in certain situations. Ve'u chiyuv. And this is something that the obligation of the amount changes according to the need. This person's in jail, they're asking for $30,000, $40,000, hundreds of thousands of dollars. This person's captive. Uh, it's, it, it differs in each situation. So he says now, as he explains here beautifully, it says, when you see that Hashem says tzorech, meaning, uh, um, um, it, it, uh, sorry, it's retzoni, meaning Hashem says, I want you to do this. Meaning, it's an obligation, but it's an obligation for a, a different kind of an obligation. Hashem is saying, I'm not going to make an chiyuv, an obligation, obligation, but I want, it, I want you to know this is what I want you to do. So he explains here, you can't really make someone completely obligated to do such a thing. You can't obligate someone to give more than they have. How are you going to obligate? How is Hashem going to come and say, I'm going to obligate you, give more than you can give? How? Uh, that doesn't even make sense. How do I give more than I have? Right? So you can't really obligate. So what's really Hashem saying? Midvri Rabbeinu Ula says, Rabbeinu Ula says, as we said, the reason for giving tzedakah in the first category was you got to give so that you're not unappreciative. But the, but the reason for the second category is not to give because you're being unappreciative. It's for something else. Second category is not that. And he's going to explain And the fact that he says, and the fact that he says the second category of tzedakah is retzoni, meaning Hashem says, this is my will, this is what I want. The Zerah Shimshon is trying to say, This becomes an obligation because Hashem in a way is showing us what he would like. It's like a parent. There are certain things that a parent could obligate their children to do, force their children to do. And then there are those Jewish parents that work on guilt. Right? What do they do? They want you to do something, but they know they can't make you. 
So what did he do? He goes, listen, this is what I want, but you can do what you want. When you hear a parent usually say, this is what I want, but you can do what you want. Even if you do what you want, you're going to feel like garbage the entire time. I did what I wanted to because I'm a garbage, I'm a nobody. My mom said this is not what she wanted me to do. Right? So here Hashem is doing the same thing, so to speak. I'm not going to obligate you, but I'm telling you this is what I want. But it's not for free. So he says, according to this, now we can understand why is it that the pasuk has a double language of naton titenlo, surely give him. Shekeneget hayichiyuv harishon, for the first obligation of the first category of tzedakah, which is what? To give an order so that not, we're, we're not kafui tova, we're giving tzedakah so that we're showing that we appreciate God's wealth that He has given it to us. That first one. That is giving of tzedakah, shehu kefi asagatayad, and that's according to how much you can afford. Then the, katu, the, the, the pasuk says, Naton, give, you shall give. Kol echad tzedakah. Everybody has the obligation to give tzedakah. That's what the Torah is saying. And how much? According to how much God has given you. How much God has given you, you take a percentage of that and you give back. That's you showing appreciation to God. You gave me, I appreciate what you gave me, so I'm going to take a percentage, use it for myself, and I'm going to take a percentage and give back to show you that I appreciate what you have given me. That's the first category. But the second chiyuv, the second category of giving more than you can afford, so to speak, in certain situations, the pasuk says, titenlo, give to him. So we have naton, titenlo. Second category is titenlo, give to him. And the pasuk is medaktik, the pasuk is being very precise here to say lo, titen lo. Meaning what? It wants to tell us it is letzorech ha'anid davka. It's by need basis. You have an obligation, first category, to give sadaqah. Naton, give. You have an obligation, that's your obligation. Then the second category is according to the need of the individuals. So the second category is titen lo. Lo is referring to an individual. Meaning, you have to be the judge. How much does this person need to get out of jail? How much does this person need to get out of whatever they're stuck in? Or these aniim need? You give according to what they need. That's what you need to give. That's why it says titen lo, give to him. Even if this kind of goes over the limit of what this person can afford to give. Therefore, now everyone's asking, I don't understand. If it goes over what I can afford, what is, how, how could God tell me that he, what, that's what He wants me to do? What, how do I even do that? Everyone should have this question. How does this even make sense? Give more than you can afford. The whole point is, if I can afford it, I would. If I can't afford it, how could I? Right? And for that, having that question, he says, And for this second obligation of giving more than you can afford, the Pasuk says, Do not have a negative heart when you're giving it to him. Meaning, the first stage, the first category I told you, give. You're giving what you can afford because that, the obligation is according to how much money you have. The second obligation is not according to how much money you have. In fact, it's more than how much you can afford. So you're going to turn around and say, how do I even do that? How do I do that? The Torah is saying what? Don't become negative when you're giving it. You're giving it because I said so. But don't become negative while you're doing it. Meaning, do it with a smile. Be happy that you're going to do it. Don't have a... Negative heart, a negative attitude when you're doing it. So he says, The Torah is saying, I don't want you to have a negative feeling about this. Because when you're giving more than you feel you can afford, according to the needs of that poor person, or according to the needs of that person that needs the money, And you are going to feel that because you gave more money than you can afford, then 
God forbid, you're going to become needy yourself. You're thinking to yourself, oh, okay, I'm doing what Hashem wants me to do, but if I keep doing this, where am I going to be? Then, the Torah is saying, Lo Don't feel like that. Don't have those feelings. Why? Biglal We said in the beginning, one of the questions was, why does it say zeh? Haddavar hazeh, this thing. We said whenever it says zeh, it's excluding something and including something, right? So what's this zeh referring to? The Zer Shimshon says when it says hazeh, it's referring to the second category of tzedakah. Biglal haddavar hazeh, because you give the second category of tzedakah, which is more than you can afford, yevarechecha, Hashem elokecha, bechol ma'ase yadecha. I will bless you in everything you touch. So Hashem says, you want blessing in your money? The 10% you owe anyway. Don't expect me to give you money or give you wealth because you're giving what you owe me to show that you appreciate. When you push yourself, in those times when someone is really in need and you feel you can't afford it and you go above and beyond, oh, don't feel, don't have a negative heart, don't have a bad feeling like, how am I going to do this? If I do this now, what's going to happen? Hashem says what? Because of this, because you pushed yourself, I will bless you in everything that you do. As we said, the Pasuk says what? I'm just going back one second to read the Pasuk. I will bless you in all of your doings and in everything that you put your hand to. The Midas touch. You want everything you touch to turn into gold? You push yourself a little further when you're helping someone. You push yourself a little further to help Anim, the poor people, organizations that need it. When that last push comes in, that's when the bracha comes in. Because Hashem says, listen, you give you 10%, great, you're a good boy. Good boy. Nice job. Good girl. You gave you 10%, you made $100, you gave $10. Good. You owed me that because you need to show appreciation that you know where the money's coming from. But you want bracha? You want true blessing? Show me you can feel someone else's pain. Show me that you can push yourself to the limits of where you think you can't afford and believe me, you'll be able to afford it. I'll make sure you'll be able to afford it. I'll give you so much blessing, you don't know where it came from. And I told you, I'll give you examples. I, I've met, I've been with, I've experienced people that are millionaires. One of which that I was very, very close to. And I asked them one time, many people asked them, what is the secret to your wealth? He said, these were his own words. He said to me, Rabbi, sometimes I feel selfish. I said, what do you mean? He says, I feel selfish when I give. I go, why? He goes, because if people knew sometimes how I feel when I give, you don't understand. I said, what do you mean? He said to me, I've learned that the more I push myself, the more I've given, God has given me more and more and more and more. So now when I give tzedakah, I feel like I'm doing it for myself because I know God's going to give me even more. He's like, I've seen this with my own eyes when I pushed myself to give more. And he told me many times, he said, I gave tzedakah when I didn't have. I pushed myself when I didn't even have the money to give. And I gave because my mother, my father used to push and go, give, give, and Hashem will give you. That's when it really counts. There's countless people like this. There's a lot of wealthy people out there, and many of them, when they've been asked, what is the secret to your wealth? If they know any better, they've always said, yeah, I, I give a lot of tzedakah. You give a lot of tzedakah? It's not the 10%. It's much more than the 10%. That HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives us. And that's the secret that the, that the Zerah Shimshon brings from our parasha tonight. Parasha Dere'eh. There's two categories of tzedakah. Number one is what you owe already. That you have to give just to, so that you show that you're a mensch. Just that you show you know that God has given you and you're giving back. 
But the second category is where it really counts for the bracha to come in. That's when a person notices people in need and you feel, or a place is in need and you feel that it might be a little bit more than you can handle, then Hashem says, that's when I will take that and I, I will give you more bracha so that you'll be able to do it more and more and more. May Hashem give all of us brachat belidai, blessings with no limits so that we can always be on the giving end and helping those in need. Baruch Adonai Le'aulam. Amen ve'amen.